There are so many demands in modern society that pull and tug at you, and they demand that you keep making more and more money just to satisfy your vacation needs, your comfort needs, to put up with the whole lifestyle. Well, I'm going to encourage you to follow a philosophy of living for food. Now, this is not an eat, drink, and be merry philosophy, and I'll tell you more about it in a little bit. Hey, folks. Thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, where I'm exploring life free from the shackles of society. Life is a lot more fun over on the wild side. So a lot like in my previous video, the first step for discussing finances for an off-grid lifestyle is to first simplify. Use less, spend less, need less. A lot of people get into this lifestyle and they bring all the stresses of society along with them. Uh, so that they're uh, making, the goal is to make as much money as possible rather than taking control of their lives and uh, through simplification recognizing what they need to live off of and then making that their goal. I got to admit I was the very same way. When I got my horse property I was immediately thinking of how many horses can I board and how many Airbnbs can I set up and how much can I generate but deep down inside it was contradictory to what I was trying to do with my life of simplification and freedom so I had to slow down and really start to ponder what is life about what's money about um, what am I about personally? As a result, I didn't do any money-making ventures. I did sell a three-acre parcel, and that's the money that I'm living off of now temporarily while I decide not what will make me the most money, but what is it that I actually want to do. And now, if with a modern society mindset, that will seem impossible because with mortgages and a high budget everything demands that you go out and make as much money as possible and I'm going to talk about budgets and how uh, to flip it upside down and uh, actually live the way that you want to live and not the way that you have to live in a modern budget now this is just typical a typical modern budget mortgage and rent is by far the top need uh, this is typically uh, after that would probably be vehicles uh, that includes maybe a payment on a vehicle and maintenance insurance fuel and repairs and most people have a couple vehicles and if not more in a household after that uh, it would probably be food and clothing or more likely health care uh, maybe child care after that it kind of depends on your individual life but uh, the important thing is that the bulk of a budget is um, housing and then vehicles so let's take an example there. Let's say that uh, a person makes $3,000 a month. I know that's fairly low income. Well, uh, it's typical that half of that would be going toward a mortgage. So that would be $1,500. On top of that would be your utilities of water and sewer, uh, power, maybe gas and then on top of that you have maintenance repairs for your home and your property so let's just say all of that's 1500 we'll just say it's half of your monthly income and then on top of that you've got a car payment i used to do pretty good with a 250 dollar car payment um, and then fuel depending on how much you drive but it's not cheap and uh, 
so that might be plus insurance might be a couple hundred bucks more for insurance or fuel there's 500 bucks and then you just kind of cross your fingers and hope you don't get a major repair uh, but then besides that it's tires and transmission service and oil changes and all of that stuff that adds up so let's say that that comes out to let's just say 500 bucks a month so now you're at 15 for home 500 for a vehicle so that's two thousand dollars out of your three thousand dollar income and uh so now let's just say so that's just an example and then after that there's others there's clothing which clothes can last a while but there might be um cell phone streaming services all that stuff that you don't really need but you you have a few uh those things going uh internet as well i suppose a lot of people do both so out of that three thousand bucks 2,000, 2,500, 2,600 is all going toward a, a monthly budget. Well, now you get the point. If you eliminate your housing expenses and drastically reduce your vehicle expenses, and if you cut out all the other fluff that you don't need, maybe reduce it down just to a cell phone payment and maybe share a few streaming services with other people since family plans are pretty typical on those uh, they they're built into the cost so you've got your entertainment on your phone and uh, but it's all consolidated well now you eliminate a lot of that now you're at just the um, thousand needed let me give you more uh, of an example and I'll use some of my uh, budgeting. So right now I need about $9,000 annually and that includes my horses. Now 6000 of that is just for my horses. That includes the property tax that I pay on the horse property, irrigation water, power to run my irrigation pumps and hay and grain for my horses that's all about six grand so if i took that away that would be just three grand that i would need to live off of so my housing expenses are property taxes okay well i'm going to take away the horse expenses and make it more as an example of just living um like a normal person not many normal people are going to own eight horses so my housing expense is just my property tax it's pretty easy to live i've lived in a shed a teepee a wall tent and um a horse trailer living is simple particularly when you're single so um just property taxes is all i got and my lifestyle has been reduced so much that uh, all I need my truck for is hauling my horses back and forth from one property to the other. That's twice a year. Uh, hauling hay, that's once a year. And hauling firewood, that could be one or two trips. So my vehicle maintenance is way down with very little usage my repairs are way down with very little usage and I have no payment because it's paid for and so my vehicle expenses annually are very little uh, after that it's dog food which I try to supplement with uh, food that I get from other farmers around town um, like beef tongues, beef livers, beef hearts, that kind of thing that might otherwise be thrown away. So dog food is an expense, chicken food is an expense. Um, oh yeah, for me, there's my eye care. I have to go to the doctor every couple years. I gotta pay for my vitamins that are particular for my eyes and uh, contacts or glasses, 
which comes out to about 500 a year. Meat is taken care of, and my vegetables I get from foraging, my food bill is quite reduced. Which I did forget to mention, budget annually. Monthly budgets are for the benefit of banks and companies that sell things on credit because they make a lot of money off of interest and they like it when they can say it's only 10 bucks a month, it's only 30 bucks a month, uh, it's only 100 bucks a month. And that doesn't sound so much like so much when you're budgeting monthly and that's how they get all of you paying them interest to buy things from them on time. When you budget annually, it's more impactful. Uh, I recently upgraded my iPhone. This is a perfect example. Upgraded my iPhone, and uh, I have a unlimited everything plan, so I'm paying about 90 bucks a month. And annually, that's a thousand bucks. Well, when you're talking about a $9,000 annual budget, suddenly a $90 a month sounds a whole lot more substantial when you're looking at it annually. It's one eighth of my, or one ninth of my budget. Or if we go back to the example of not using my horse expenses, it's a third of my budget. So if I could stop using my phone, that reduces my budget tremendously. And now what's the significance of all this? Why give up all that, uh, all that fun stuff? For freedom. And I had mentioned living for food. If you focus everything on living for food because your housing is taken care of, you're not driving places all the time, you don't need an escape because you live a lifestyle that you don't need to escape from, you don't need a vacation from. Well, now your, uh, now your daily focus is, what am I going to enjoy today? And I tell you what, it's very rewarding if you choose food. For me, it's coffee, tea, and food. I've been baking bread and making donuts and eating garlic chicken or garlic lamb. And my food is amazing. And I look forward to it every day. But it's also a reward for effort. There's a lot of research that's been done in what it takes to have a satisfied life. Imagine that. Thousands of years, humans didn't need that. Now it's a huge question. Why are we all so empty? What's all this emptiness? So here's one example that I found when I was Googling it. Personality pattern. Living this lifestyle, you can do it based on your own preferences and your personality. You don't have to do it just like anybody else. Social connections. You're going to find other people who are like-minded, like you, and who are doing similar things. And you're also likely going to uh, create relationships where you uh, benefit one another. Whether, for example, if somebody has a Jersey cow, uh, you can get you trade something for cream. And you uh, make your own butter. And let's say you uh, are, are, have a spinning wheel and you like to uh, spin wool. And you trade it for uh, cream so you can make butter. So now you're codependent off of each other. You're both like-minded. Those are strong relationships, uh, social connections. But there's also autonomy and decision-making. You get to decide how you go about it. What do you want to garden? What do you not want to garden? How much do you want to forage? How do you want to go about getting meat? Do you want to raise uh, full-size cows? Do you want to raise small cows? Do you want to raise sheep? Do you like goats? Uh, all kinds of autonomy and decision making. And going back to personality, what's your favorite types of food? I love bread. And so I decided to start learning to make bread. And now uh, my life is so much better for it. Uh, and I reap the rewards of my efforts. Uh, financial security, well, we'll talk about that some more in a little bit. But I tell you what, by minimizing your budget and your financial needs, 
you're going to feel way more secure financially. When you can rely on yourself for uh, staying warm and for putting a roof over your head and for getting your own food, suddenly those financial needs of security are greatly reduced because you're taking care of most of your needs. Society collapses, I'm fine. Uh, scope for innovation and creativity. Again, that kind of goes back to the autonomy, autonomy and decision making. You get to be creative. So one year you garden and uh, you learn from it. You don't have to keep doing it the same way because you're not working for anybody. You get to innovate. And uh, for instance, this year, if my grass grows tall enough, I'm, re- I'm going to make an effort into uh, cutting my own hay and putting up my own hay for the winter. That will save me a tremendous amount of money. But even more important, the satisfaction of uh, being innovative and creative. Just using my own labor and not having to buy machines, not having to train my horses, just using a, a blade and cutting and raking myself. I'm excited about that. and That's a great example of innovation that you can do. Let's say I don't like that. Well, then what do I want to do to make money and buy my hay instead. It's exciting uh, and it allows for my own creativity and innovation. Acceptance and empathy, that's workplace drama. Uh, you get to choose who's your, who your friends are. You don't have to go see a bunch of people that you don't like. Uh, when you live this life, you get to choose who comes to your property and whose property you go and visit. It's very nice. Uh, challenges and diversity of tasks. That goes back to like what I was saying about, uh, hey, so I'm looking forward to this challenge of uh, using a scythe to cut my hay. But that also means first I've got to uh, grow my hay and I got to make sure there's weeds out of it. And what's also cool is there's a guy uh, who came along recently who has done it before. So I've got a resource right there. Um, I don't have to rely on YouTube videos. So pretty excited how that's coming together. Uh, Diversity of tasks. I hate doing the same thing over and over. Uh, It's hard enough to do uh, videos. I'm like bad about it. And that's one of the beauties of this. When I do think about money making options, for me, I'm working on multiple types so that I don't have to do the same thing day in and day out. But let's say uh, I learned to uh, spin yarn. So I make a portion of my income off of that. Let's say I decide to do hides for sale, which I'm not, but let's say I did. Then I make a portion of it off of that. And I'm not having to just do hides all year long and wear myself out and get sick of it. Uh, To me, the diversity is exciting. And you're gonna have to be diverse, even if you do have something that you focus on let's say you just decide to spend wool a lot and make a bulk of your income off of that well there's still diversity of tasks and other things that are going to keep you interested this is the research this is what they say is important and a work-life balance that's where the food comes in every day you reward yourself um for me the simple life i don't like reward myself for breakfast lunch and dinner I try to, my coffee is my excitement through the day, and then at night I look forward to my uh, good meal. But um, the work-life balance, thats it's so rewarding. You get to cook your food how you want it and the best way that you enjoy it every day. Uh, that's life. So that's an example of what I'm saying about living for food. Kind of like life all just um, makes sense when you just focus on uh, on rewarding yourself. It's not being lazy. It's not eat, drink, and be merry because you can't. You have to go out and make it happen. You have to have forethought and diligence, and it's up to you. It's very rewarding. Like I said, then your income needs are diminished greatly. And now, the thing that keeps people busy in our society is labor costs. Labor is so expensive. 
That's why most companies go overseas with um, manufacturing and putting things together and it's actually cheaper to ship, have it assembled and ship it back and they still make a huge profit off of it. So now going back to that $3,000 annually. So instead of monthly, that's all that I need annually. So 3,000 divided by 12 is $250. So that now it's only $250 a month that I need to make. Well, suddenly a whole lot of things become possible to do to make a living. Um, let's say hides. Let's say you want to learn how to do brain skin uh, deer tan hides. Uh, they sell for 250 bucks a hide. So uh, you could do one of those just off of one hide. Uh, that's pretty doable. So now you're now these labor intensive ways of making money become feasible. Let's give another example. Uh, cutting cordwood. Uh, I've done the math on that multiple times because it it is a very viable way to make a living, but it is so labor intensive that it hasn't been worth it for me to seriously consider. I'm cutting my own firewood, but to do it for a living, it's just too labor intensive. But as I said, at $250 a month, if that's all you need to make, that's just one cord of wood where I live. Granted, you got to take away for uh, fuel costs and maintenance costs uh, and um, uh, for your chainsaw and your truck. So even if you do a cord and a half <clears throat> at um, 250 a cord, that would be uh, 350, um, 375, and then you take away 75 for expenses. So. By doing a cord and a half of wood, you're uh, making enough. And uh, so let's say you hit it really hard for two months and do your year's worth, and then you're done. And you got the rest of the year to do your raising and cooking and enjoying life. Uh, another idea would be making baskets and selling them on Etsy. There's some really cool weaving out there that people do. Uh, I've seen pine needle baskets and uh, you can develop that skill and start selling them. I don't know how long they take, I don't know what they sell for, but you can look on Etsy. All kinds of options, and I think you get the point now that um, now your labor isn't such an important part of it. Now things that would not be feasible to make a living when living in town uh, with modern society becomes an option because your budget is so low you can invest a week or two at your income producer and make plenty of money. Um, there's so many examples. Candles. Lots of things that you can make. You can collect wool and get into spinning and weaving and crocheting and uh, selling stuff that way. <sighs> Personally, I'm giving it a go at videos, but maybe I'll make uh, enough of an income off of them, uh, which wouldn't really be viable if I had uh, everything going on in town that I had. So, I hope this is all really helpful. It's such an expansive topic. I've reduced it down to what I've said here in the video. But man, I could have gone on and on. My phone says I'm already at 30 minutes, and I've only touched on what I have to say. So if this stuff is helpful, again, let me know. I really appreciated the feedback on the last one. A lot of people said it was helpful and asked me to continue. So here I am. Um, if you want to help out, you can share these videos. Most Facebook groups and Reddit groups don't allow self-promotion, which is fine because it's kind of tacky. Anyway, if you want to share these videos, and if it's allowed by the rules, then uh, that's really helpful if you think other people would find this information helpful. So I'm going to keep going on this series. Next uh, might be housing. Uh, is probably what I'll talk about. 
Uh, so again, let me know that it's helpful and that'll uh, keep me going. For now, let me know in the comments. Tell me about your own stories. I love hearing uh, personal experiences as well. So talk to you soon.